New York City founder of Geltrude and Company, Dan Geltrude. Darren, it's great to see you. Uh, so, Dan, where's the money? Some people are, are wondering where their child tax credits are and how to receive them. And, and apparently some families haven't received those yet. Do you know why? Well, it's hard to say why, but what we are seeing from the IRS across the board is that there are a lot of people who are owed money, whether it's in the form of a tax refund related to their tax return, dating all the way back to April that still haven't received their money. So the IRS, who is uh, short on resources and has been put in a situation where they've had to take charge of a lot of things related to stimulus-related payments have simply fallen behind. Now, as it pertains to this uh, child uh, care tax credit, or now payment, the IRS does provide a portal which you can go into and see what the status is of your payment. Now, if the payment is not there and you don't see it, there is a form 3911 that you can file to basically track and find out where your payment is. But if it's not there, who knows where it is? Yeah, that's a good question. And uh, online, there uh, is help for people to track that down. We can debate the child uh, tax credit another day, but we're just giving this information out here. Um, here's another eye-popping number for you. 61% of Americans apparently paid no federal income tax last year. Uh, that was according to a new study that was released. Um, that's, a, that's a pretty big number. It's a, it's a huge number. Generally, that number is somewhere, let's say, in the mid 40 percent, meaning, meaning, you know, 45 percent or so of Americans pay no federal income tax. Now, in 2020, last year through last year, that number has moved up to 61 percent. And the reason for that is, is so many people were not working and instead collecting money from the IRS so they were pulling from the government and not on the tax roll. So therefore, we see that number grow substantially. But this goes to a greater issue about paying your fair share. Right now, you have the top 20 percent of earners paying 70 percent of the income tax being collected by the federal government. Is that not enough? Are the people who are doing well and successful not paying enough? Of course they are. They're paying too much. The issue simply is not enough people across the board are paying in, but instead taking from the system. That formula does not work, Stephanie. Yeah, definitely not. Uh, now I want to pick your brain on the Delta variant and its effects on our economy. Uh, you've been on the show every week, I guess since like the last year, and, and every single day it's kind of like a new thing. We weren't expecting the Delta variant when we were having conversations six months ago. We thought maybe we'd be back to normal by now with the vaccine out and available, and uh, not so much. The Delta variant is really slowing things down when it comes to uh, businesses being able to, able to hire. It's slowing down production, it's really having some serious consequences. It, it certainly is. Look, the, the, the best form of stimulus that we could have is the vaccine. And we are seeing that the vaccine is reasonably effective, more than reasonably effective, against the Delta variant. So as long as we continue to have more and more people get vaccinated, and obviously today we saw that the uh, Pfizer vaccine has been approved by the FDA. That's great news. Hopefully those that were um, a little bit cynical or hesitant will come around and get vaccinated. But the point is this, the Delta variant should not, and I wanna repeat, should not be having an enormous impact on our economy. I think what's happening here is we're also overreacting. Didn't we learn our lesson the first go round about shutting everything down? Masks, okay, if you must. But are we going to go down the road of shutting down the economy again and see those disastrous results? I certainly hope not. Yeah. 
And, and as for the vaccine, I mentioned it earlier in the show, you know, that's great that the FDA approved it, uh, but I still would like Americans to have an option and not being pushed into something that maybe is not good for them or they, you know, they need to figure that out with their doctors. Uh, not listen to me. I don't want to tell people what to do, uh, but it's great that that we're in going in that direction and people can feel more confident. Um, I want to ask you about this. So I always have a, obviously take a big issue with businesses and corporations going woke and we always say on the show go go woke go broke and uh, the latest one is Patagonia apparently they're going to uh, stop working with a ski resort in Jackson Hole because apparently the owner threw a part uh, through a fundraiser for some Republicans and they take issue with that so they're not going to allow for their products to be sold at that ski resort anymore and I think that's just it's just such a ridiculous a ridiculous thing for them to do. This is a slippery slope. Anytime corporations want to get involved in these political issues, they're asking for trouble. Everyone in the in the corporate world should have learned from the simple statement from Michael Jordan so many years ago related to selling sneakers. Hey, Republicans buy sneakers, too. So anytime you're making this type of move, move as a corporation, you're essentially potentially isolating half of your customers. Why do you want to do that? Now, Patagonia, in, in this case, is, is all about climate change, and that's where their thrust is related to this boycott of, of distributing their product. I, I just want to ask them this. How many scientists is Patagonia uh, employing right now, and what are their study results to prove that what they're doing is actually helping the environment? When I get that information, then I'll be a little bit a better able to comment. Yeah, and it's so ridiculous too when when um, Patagonia or these companies come out and they're like, oh, you know, we're we're here to for better climate policies. But the, the Democrats, if you actually look at their climate policies, in name and title it always sounds good, but then if you actually look at the details, it's just more about regulations and taxing Americans. And then other countries are the ones who end up being the polluters, and then they make the money, and then we become dependent. So, for example, you know, they're Biden supporters. So Biden cancels Keystone Pipeline here, but then lets Russia uh, go along with this Nord Stream 2. So what's the difference? Is that helping? Is that helping the planet? Not really. Well, you're exactly right. Listen, we shut down, or I should say Biden shut down the Keystone Pipeline, and then we have to go ask OPEC to increase their flow of oil so that our prices don't go up so high. So to me, you're also risking national security when you're going to rely upon foreign countries, which are not exactly our friends, to keep the flow of oil coming to this country because we want to be environmentally friendly. It makes absolutely no sense. Either the world is all in or we fall behind everyone else. Losing formula, Stephanie, losing formula. Yeah. And also, too, uh, you can go check on their website if you don't believe me, but uh, they make most of their pro a lot of their products in China. So they're going to complain about China and their commitment to uh, green and climate policies. No, they're not gonna complain about that. So it's just, they're so hypocritical and I'm just so tired of these woke businesses and, and hopefully they take a hit because I'm tired of it. I'm not gonna buy their stuff anymore. Anyway, Dan, I'm gonna leave it here. Thank you so much. Thanks, Stephanie. Of course, coming up next.